Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video with another heavy hitter from the Marvel Legends X-Men Juggernaut Builder Figure Wave. It's Cable. And as we turn to the side to take in the side packaging art, it depicts Cable, weapon in arm, locked and loaded, and eye aglow. And turning to the packaging back, which pictures Cable again showing off his arsenal and also pictured as the juggernaut builder figure of this wave and joining Cable in this wave are Wolverine, Kitty Pride, Iceman, Havoc, Rogue, Phoenix and Deadpool. And his bio reads, a lifelong soldier, Cable perfected his fighting prowess when a technological virus suppressed his natural psychic abilities. Here he is out of packaging, and for those not in the know, allow me to flesh out that bio by cutting a long and convoluted backstory short. Cable is the son of Cyclops and Madeline Pryor, a clone of Jean Grey. As a baby, he was infected by Apocalypse with the techno-organic virus, leading Cyclops to send him 2,000 years into the future in an effort to save his life from the virus. Later, he returned to the present as both an adult and hardened warrior. Cable's first appearance in Marvel Legends came under Toybiz in 2004 Series 6, which curiously all these years later has a symmetry to this new wave. As like it, not only did it include Cable, but also Phoenix, Brown Costume Wolverine, Juggernaut, and Deadpool. When Cable was rumoured for this wave, prior to me seeing a picture of him, I'd hoped for an updated version of the Toybiz one, a classic Rob Liefeld look from the early X-Force comic. You know, shoulder pads so big he'd never be able to fit through a doorway, and a gun so large he'd have to be as strong as the Hulk to carry it. Sure, things that Liefeld gets dogged for, but you have to admit his art does cast a long shadow. Well, does for me at least, as when I finally saw a picture of this more modern Cable we'd be getting, Frankly, I was disappointed. That placed him off my radar compared to the rest of the wave, yet now I have him under the glare of my spotlight, and I'm really impressed. Taking in all the sculpted detail, I certainly feel like I'm getting my money's worth here. Sure, a few parts reused from the Marvel Legends nuke, but that reuse is dwarfed by all of the new sculpting, the techno-organic arm, and then his torso armor. The sculpt is very considered, they've not missed a trick, so the sculpt even continues into the interior of his armor around his neck. That armor, in case you're wondering, isn't removable. It's not a shell on top of the torso. It is, in fact, the torso. As I said, it's a more modern look, to be precise, from the Avengers X Sanction series, which was Cable's big return, having previously died, and also acted as a prelude to the Avengers vs. X-Men event. I've also heard this is how he appears in the Deadpool video game, but never having played it, people who have will have to attest to that in the comments below. When it comes to the deco, it is a mixed bag, more focused on his metallic parts, with his arm and half of his face having received a dark wash over the silver paint to really accentuate the dimensionality of the sculpt. In the face sculpt, I think they've captured the character's hardened gruffness, all stiff-lipped with the scars over his right eye, both slightly raised in relief in the sculpt and then in receipt of a deco too, whereas what I assume is his X logo shoulder tattoo is just there in the deco. His left eye is nicely decoed yellow with an accent of red outlining it. Giving him a Terminator-type menace and creating a nice visual of the character's conflict between man and techno-organic machine. Here are his two accessories. They're molded in a metallic-like plastic that has a slight green tint to it. Now, the larger of the two guns comes with these bullets that insert into it. I don't like them. They seem piddly for a weapon of this size, and I assume by the design of the weapons they were some kind of future tech. So jarring to see they fire regular bullets of our time. As we've seen, the man has an affection for big guns. Just what is he compensating for? Well, I'll tell you, it's not a small penis. As Cable uses his weapons to compensate for constantly having to use his psychic ability to hold back the techno-organic virus that in spite of being sent to the future was never cured. At some point, so grave was his condition, should he die, a clone was created, which brings us to Strife and the comparison the Ruckus requested. This being from the Toys R Us exclusive Jubilee Bath Wave, and as the evil clone, come on, we've all got one, of Cable, the two are appropriately scaled and proportioned to each other. Strife a little too short, but hey, cut him some slack, he was grown in a test tube and likely wasn't fed enough greens as a kid. So kids watching this, let this be a lesson to you. Yeah, eat your greens or you won't end up as tall as your good clone.
And here is Cable in another requested comparison side by side with Hope Summers from the return of Hasbro's Marvel Legends in 2012 and the Terax Bath Wave. Hope being the first mutant born after the Scarlet Witch's declaration of no more mutants. She's Cable's adopted daughter having, like him, gone off on a jaunt to the future and returned to the present considerably older. I think the two have a good look together. Now looking at his articulation and his head rotates side to side and is able to look down quite far weirdly into his chest armor and then he's able to look up this much. At the shoulder his arm rotates and this moves up this far. There's upper arm rotation followed by a double jointed elbow. Then at the wrists his hands rotate and these are hinged moving up and then don't really move in the other direction owing to that armored plate on the top of his hand. Then he has waist rotation and in addition to that he has a rotating diaphragm joint too. This does move forward but not especially far and equally it doesn't move very far back. At the hips his legs don't move out particularly far but they do move much further forward and then they move this far back. There's upper leg rotation followed by a double jointed knee no lower leg rotation and then at the ankles his feet move backwards but not really forwards and then he has that ankle rocker pivot that I love with this being his widest stance possible still with both feet flat on the floor. So all things considered and for me this cable is the sleeper hit of the wave. When you're on the fence as I was it's a pleasant surprise to be won over in this way. To me I equate him to dining out and not only the food being better than expected but you get the bill and they've undercharged you so you pay and quickly leave before they catch you. Not that I've ever done that of course. Anyway if you missed my look at Wolverine from this wave then click the video on the left to catch up and stay tuned for our final stop on the road to our look at Deadpool. It's Kitty Pride. I hope to see you all next time. Mm, bye.